Hello and welcome to you from uh, the Mike Center here on our second We've just seen our brilliant live set from uh, the cassettes. So guys, how have you been? Yeah, good. Good. Oh, not too bad. Yeah, a bit warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're dressed uh, pretty sharp for the occasion. As yeah, well. yeah, we came prepared. Yeah. <laughs> Far too many cool jackets for this wedding, Mike. <laughs> And so for those people who are new to the band and this is their first experience, then just want to tell us a bit about you guys. Uh, yeah, we're a two-piece from Buxton. Um, the sound not Stockport. Yeah, not <laughs> Stockport. We should go quite a lot. Um, it's it's a bit different really because we use a drum machine. Yeah. So, uh, but the influences are kind of like punk, indie, new wave mm. type thing. Sure. Um, and I think it was about three years ago since you've been on the show. You've been pretty busy since then, I'm sure. Yeah, well, the last time we were on the show, Michael, if you remember, it was about like three weeks before lockdown. Right. So yeah. we gave you all our glorious plans for <laughs> what we were going to do in all these plans. Yeah. And 2020, then. and then, yeah, it all came crashing down. But uh, lo lockdown was quite eventful. Um, yeah. Obviously, when it first started, we were in the same boat as everybody else. We weren't really sure what, mm. what was going on. The we did actually have booked and ready to go in April, the biggest tour that we'd ever booked up to that point. Right. And obviously that... That fell. was heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. that yeah, um, yeah. That was the worst thing about it, was cancelling, just cancelling gigs. We'd never, I don't mm. think we'd ever cancel, because we'd cancelled one gig before then, because there was a blizzard, and we had to right. turn around and come yeah. back. And the whole gig was cancelled anyway, so it wasn't like we let anyone mm -hmm. down. And, and in three years, and then mm. suddenly, everything was just getting cancelled yeah. and cancelled. Yeah, and, and then rebooked and then cancelled again. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there was a bit of an adjustment period in the beginning, but um, I mean, obviously we couldn't even we couldn't even get together to yeah, work on yeah, music. Definitely. But um, that thing kind of started on the internet, didn't it? Where all these artists were doing like those um, <coughs> sessions from everybody's house yes, yeah, and then compiling sure. it together. So we thought, well, that that's quite interesting. We can do that because we've both got studios at our mm -hmm. houses. Um, so we just tried something a bit. Yeah, we thought we know between us. We know loads of musicians locally and and not locally and. And thought, yeah, we'd get, get on some collaborations and do mm. some. Stuff. Yeah. So we tested the water. We did some acoustic stuff first. That went down quite well. And then, like he said, we got in contact with some friends of ours from various projects. Yeah. And yeah. said, you know, would you be interested in putting something together? So we did a remix of our um, a track of our first album, Cold Caller. Mm. And it was, uh, yeah, it was really good. It was really interesting. A um, little bit of a different flavour. It was kind of really... Because everybody, nobody had heard everybody's like individual parts. Right. If you get what right. I mean. Yeah, so everybody was me and him just put together. Mm -hmm. I just put a basic acoustic guitar track yeah. down. He put a rough guide vocal down, and we just sent it to everybody individually and was like, "Do something with mm -hmm. that." Um, we had like keyboard player the Junter, who's mm -hmm. an artist from Manchester. Um, Noral Dance, an artist from here in Macclesfield. He played bass on it. Mm -hmm. um, some guys that we know from Buxton played like drums and other guitar parts. Kenny on it was stuff. on guitar, wasn't he? Yeah, Kenny. Um, it was really good, it was really yeah. interesting, yeah. So that um, that kind of kept us going for a little mm. bit. Um, especially with me, you know, like just working on the production thing, because I really, right. st I really right. struggled with lockdown. Mm. Well, it was weird, wasn't it? Because it was one of those things we probably wouldn't do again because it was such hard work. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> it, it was that hard work that mm. kept us going right. through, right. like, was what was needed mm. at the time. I think out of lockdown, I don't think we'd have mm. the energy or the time or to do something like that. So mm. was, I don't think that would have ever existed without that. And that's not to knock any of the musicians that was on it. They're, they all did oh, a fantastic no, yeah, job. It was, just, it's just, it was just for us. Yeah. 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 Um, the level we like mm. to put our stuff out and, mm. and, and how we produce Collaborating things. was good as in, in, and interesting, but we yeah. said um, if we were going to do something like that again, I think it would have to be in person. Yeah. Opposed to, yeah. yeah sending Bringing files. all the musicians together, I guess you have to adjust all the tracks yeah. so they fit yeah. together. Yeah. A lot of work, a lot of work. work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did subsequently try to do a couple more after, and uh, mm. it didn't end up. It didn't end up working out, but um, it was quite interesting. Yeah. And then, so that kept us going for a couple of months, and then by the time that kind of started to lose its novelty a little bit, um, we actually got pulled in for a charity single. Oh, right. uh, I can talk yeah. a bit about that if you want. Um, sure. What charity were you helping? So during lockdown, these two guys from Stockport, shout out Jason and Andrew, um, they were using that one hour of time that we got for exercise. Mm. They dressed up as superheroes. Spider Spider they dressed up as Spider-Man. They dressed up right. as spider -Man. And we just yeah. go around and say hello to the kids. And then oh, great. became like local just, celebrities really Yeah, just jogging around. They were doing everything social distance yeah. and everything. But they just jog around their local area. And um, 
after a couple of weeks doing this, all the kids around the area got really excited about mm. it and they were waiting by yeah. the windows and everything for them. They news, the local signs, news picked it up. So yeah, this thing, this thing went viral. So local yeah. news picked it up. Then before you knew it, they were all over national news. He mm. got himself on this morning. Yeah. I think he subsequently ended up getting nominated for a Private Britain Award. Yeah, how much did they raise? They raised a lot of money. Yeah, they raised, they the raised the 50 day. grand for yeah. the yeah. NHS by 50 grand, yeah. And, um, um, so yeah, they, they asked us to do a charity thing. Well, I think they asked someone else and he knew us and he mm. couldn't do it. And he said, well, I know these right. guys who are really good songwriters. The guys who wrote Wind Your Neck In. They'll, yeah, they'll, they'll do, do it. They'll do it for a charity <laughs> thing. No, it was, it was, like a really, it was a really yeah. interesting challenge. Yeah. Um, so is it based around Spider-Man, the song? Yeah, or? you well, can listen to it. The song still, is the story yeah. of what they did. But like, oh, right. it's, it's still on YouTube now. Yeah. You can still, there's links at the bottom of the video. The song's called Stockport Spider-Man. I mean, it's not a million sense. miles away from one of our normal tracks, yeah. right? Yeah. But it is quite different. And But the process of doing it, of writing lyrics to a story, mm. to yeah. someone yeah. else's idea, mm. and that, that was all really interesting and fun to do. Mm. Uh, uh, we made a video for it as well. That yeah. kind of sums up the story. Like I said, you sure. can find it on YouTube. Cause it, it's Stockport Spider-Man. And it, it, it basically tells a story mm. there. And it's got loads of news clips. From, yeah. from, In the from video, the video, yeah. yeah. Oh, you, get, you get the whole mm. experience from the video. Well, like you said, I mean, they subsequently ended up raising 50 grand yeah. just mm. off that alone. And I know that both Jason and Andrew have carried on past lockdown. They're doing various... Yeah. events like I know Andrew did like a, I think he did a skydive or something like right. that to raise that's some money Jason's done a lot of like marathon runs yeah. and that kind of thing so yeah big up those guys mm. like George said it was um, not a million miles away from what we do but yeah yeah, it was um, it's a different flavour yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 way of songwriting I suppose yeah. 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 is your songwriting when you normally do it is that normally more personal or well, your yeah. own rent really yeah it's definitely like the, we the way we kind of look at it is we've 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 definitely created like a little world if you know what i mean there's mm. so many like references and in jokes right. and that kind of thing so yeah. from that aspect it is very personal but yeah. i wouldn't say that the subject matter of the songs are particularly no. well they're but i do like to say they're all true stories and they're yeah. all at least loosely oh, yeah. based on people we've met or know right. or have experienced yeah, yeah. 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 somewhere or another yeah. Yeah. And I think since then, you've, have you done a new EP as well since then? Yeah, I mean, we've got a little bit of uh, an exclusive announcement for you. So um, our EP that we were, the last time we spoke, man, that's what we were here yeah. promoting. Mm. Um, that's been reissued in a, in a couple of weeks by Rare Vitamin Records. Um, we played some shows for that label mm. recently, including an annual diversion over in Northwich. That was brilliant. And... Um, Jason over at the label seems quite excited about that EP, so he's reissuing it on cassette and CD. When it was released first time around, it never had a physical release; it was only yeah. released digitally. Mm. Um, so we're going to give it um, we're going to give it a whirl with Rare Vitamin. Mm. So big shout out to them! Thank you for getting involved. Um, yeah. Hopefully, touch wood, that'll yeah. lead to um, that'll lead to some more releases. We can fingers yeah. crossed. So when you're doing these releases, are they all self-produced then, or do you? Yeah, we we yeah, we, oh, we do everything. Yeah, everything ourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we did an, we did a, a I wouldn't really call it an EP. It was like a promo release off the back mm. of those lockdown sessions yeah. I was talking about and collaborating with people. We thought it'd be quite interesting to do something a little bit more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a bit more of like an original project, collaborating right. with people okay. as opposed to you know remixes and mm. that kind of thing. Um, so Ash Burgess, local session drummer from mm. Buxton. Awesome drummer, yeah. Yeah, he's really a fantastic drummer. I, I go well back with him many years. Um, he played quite a lot of drums on those lockdown yeah. sessions. He uh, he joined us in the studio, and then we worked with um, an artist called Felicia, who we played with from from Manchester, um, and we did like a little three track EP type mm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, that um, that was quite an interesting process, but. Um, yeah. And when you do future releases, is that going to be with those as guys as well, or are you going to? Uh, I mean, the collaboration thing at the minute. Um... It's not like we'd say we'd never collaborate again, but mm. it's just we're, we're we're into the new album now. If the yeah, if the right thing came along, we'd definitely yeah. jump at it. Yeah. But um, we did, you know, obviously we spent nearly two years doing that kind of thing. Right. We think mm. a lot of the people who were around for our first album are chomping at the bit for a second album, mm. really, so. I think the rest of this year is going to be spent is our priority, focused yeah. on, it, on yeah. recording yeah. the second album. Um, well, no, we'd never say never to yeah. any collaborations, sure. and if the right one came along, we'd yeah, we'd jump at the chance. 
So there are quite a lot of tracks written already for this new Most album. of the tracks, apart from the last one, all the tracks we played tonight should be, should yeah. be on the mm. new album. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, the bulk of the work for the new album is done. Um, right, yeah. We just yeah, they're the ones we're doing on stage at the minute when we do yeah, shows. We, right, we're sure. we, we like to. That's something but we have others that are still in the process of being produced. And yeah, and something we've always done from the beginning is before we kind of um, commit these things to like a final version when we're recording them. We like to test them live quite a few yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, we are a live band. That, yeah. that is. Yeah. Yeah. As much product, as we love doing all the albums and everything yeah. like that, when you need to, it's necessity on the internet. Mm. But um, but we love playing live, and that's what we do. So we put a lot of effort into trying to make the the album sound like. Mm. Like you, it would sound when you come to see us, yeah. Because it can change, it can change dramatically yeah. when you're doing yeah. electronic music. Mm. So we we found that with our very first album, wasn't it? It's very yeah. different when you listen to the album than when you listen to the same songs yeah, on stage. Sure. Almost some of them were completely different. So, so you have uh, a few like samples and stuff. Is that difficult to do in a live? Oh, he does all that. I no idea. You have to ask him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to kind of cheat a little bit. Um, right. You you can't really like trigger. The samples we could, but we'd need like an absolute more equipment. Yeah, we need <laughs> shit <from> gear, <laughs> shit <from> more gear. <laughs> as daft as it sounds, only being two of us in a drum machine, there's already like a lot of gear that we have yeah. to move around already. Yeah. So, bringing samplers and mm. triggers and that sort of thing. But, um, I just use an old fashioned loop pedal, right? Um, okay. yeah, sure. yeah, so I'll, mm. when we're in the studio, I'll take the masters of our songs, yeah, and then we'll just kind of mess around with them and see what works on stage, what doesn't. Mm. Um, so a lot of the samples. Because some of them, when you're on stage... To be honest, Mike, a lot of the samples are illegal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, like, scare around, though, but, yeah. yeah. A, lot of the, a lot of the samples I don't think will be there mm. forever, to be honest. No, but it's from a practical standpoint. Like, playing live, a lot of these samples, when you listen to the record, when you're playing live in a big place, mm. everybody's jumping and shouting. Some of them don't cut through, you know what I mean? Mm. You kind of find yeah. yourself going, what was that? Yeah. And it was one of the samples, so... Do you know the band The Avalanches? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sure one of their tracks had so many samples on that they couldn't make any money out of the song at all. Yeah, yeah we yeah. do run that risk. So. <laughs> yeah. But we're more aware of it now. We didn't care at first, mm. but yeah. now, now well, we do. If you become really famous, yeah. then that's when you have to worry about yeah. it people. And because it evolved, anyway, we found that's the most evolving part of our music, is the yeah. samples. Like I said, we'll play, so have some great samples in there, but they just don't work on stage. Right. They don't call yeah. through, or they, they'll over uh, overplay me. Or um, when I'm singing, so they end up moving or being taken out or changed and stuff. So, mm. so I don't think it'll ever bother us really, will it? Having to take and it's something we've been that. actually looking at for the second album. We did say we wanted to try and be a little bit more clever with samples. So as mm. opposed to like the movie quotes and that yeah. kind of thing yeah. that we're known for, we've tried to be mm. a little bit more creative this time mm. around. Um, like you'll notice on that first track we played at the session, DNR, we're doing yeah. like there's there's um, like defib samples yeah. and that right. kind of thing. Mm. So. Mm. Yeah, um, stuff that we're not going to get rinsed for if it So speaking of live gigs, are there live gigs coming up for people who come and see you at? Yeah, we're literally just culminating our summer run of gigs now. So right. um, oh, we've played everywhere over the last couple of weeks. Mm. Sheffield, Blackpool, Manchester. Great gig uh, here at Maxfield yeah. a couple of weeks ago. We've had a few about. good gigs. Um, the next show is um, a week tomorrow over in Buxton at the London Road. That's our first mm. hometown show since 2019, so... Oh, we're really yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah, we're hoping there'll be a bit of a turnout for that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's quite rare we do like quite a long set list, if you get me. We mm. should be playing for like an hour and a half, couple of hours right. next week. Yeah. So that, That'd be good. Yeah, if anybody wants to come and see that. Mm. We'll yeah. literally be doing every song. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So loads of new material, mm. there'll be loads of exclusives. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then we're taking a little bit of a break in September right. for recording. Mm. Yeah. Because with this, we keep saying that we've got a new album coming out. and <laughs> Well, it's been coming for a while, and we've been telling people it's mm. coming for a while. But we had a bit of a rocky restart after... Um, the start of this year was just a Yeah, when COVID mm. ended and um, we yeah. wanted to get back out there, it was just one thing after another, family health problems, all sorts of right. things just kept mm. getting in the way. And then it did start to feel like we were never going to get going again. And we were mm. worried about when we did, well, we had still have, have the same impacts we were having when we started right. and, mm. and really worried about that. But we have, haven't we? We've, mm. like, it feels like we've just now that we've done a few, got a few mm. good gigs under our belt. So that we're back where we were. Every time we put a few weeks aside to work on the album, like another. Yeah, and more gigs come in. Would you try and say no? It's like, I know we're, yeah. we're so enjoying being back on the road again, playing these gigs. We don't yeah. want to say no yeah. to anyone. So, yeah, the album's been put off and put off and put yeah. off. <laughs> 
So now I remind people where they can find like your music and everywhere. And everywhere. Yeah, you just have are. to Google us, and, and we'll be mm. all over YouTube, Spotify, yeah. we are like Bandcamp. It's everywhere. It's mm. everywhere. The, the easiest thing I tell people now: just Google cassette apes. But um, mm. if you like Spotify, Apple yeah. Music, iTunes, and you're that. the first one that comes up, then it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. No other cassette yeah. apes yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to remind people what you've got coming up and then yeah so we've got um, obviously this EP is coming out Don't Bring a Drum Machine to a Dogfight that's coming out on Rare Vitamin Records you can get that on a uh, limited edition cassette which is a little bit different a little mm-hmm. bit of a novelty item um, and then it's it's being issued on CD so you can mm. get that from Rare Vitamin Records their band camp their page um, we've got this live show next week week, t- week tomorrow Thursday the 18th over in Buxton I don't think we've got any other show we've booked after that uh, stuff at the end of the year. We've got some stuff around at Christmas yeah. in Nottingham. Right, right. Um, some charity shows as well for Punk for the Homeless. Right, yeah. Um, Punk for the Homeless. Yeah, you we, can do, we do them. a lot for them. Yeah, they do some fantastic work. Mm. Big shout out to Egan. Yeah. Um, but mainly after after next week, it's kind of a head down and start working on the album. Brilliant. Well, thanks for coming on the show. And Thank you. Love. We always love it, man. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thanks.